Question 80.10. Questioner, the fifteenth archetype is the matrix of the spirit and has been called the devil. Can you tell me why that is so? Answer, I am Ra. We do not wish to be facile in such a central query, but we may note that the nature of the spirit is so infinitely subtle that the fructifying influence of light upon the great darkness of the spirit is very often not as apparent as the darkness itself. The progress chosen by many adepts becomes a confused path as each adept attempts to use the catalyst of the spirit. Few there are which are successful in grasping the light of the sun. By far, the majority of adepts remain groping in the moonlight and, as we have said, this light can deceive as well as uncover hidden mystery. Therefore, the melody, shall we say, of this matrix often seems to be of a negative and evil, as you would call it nature. It is also to be noted that an adept is one which has freed itself more and more from the constraints of the thoughts, opinions, and bonds of other selves. Whether this is done for service to others or service to self, it is a necessary part of the awakening of the adept. This freedom is seen by those not free as what you would call evil or black. The magic is recognized, the nature is often not. Question 80.11 Questioner, could I say, then, that implicit in the process of becoming adept is the seeming polarization towards service to self because the adept becomes disassociated with many of his kind? Answer, I am Ra. This is likely to occur. The apparent happening is disassociation whether the truth is service to self and thus true disassociation from other selves or service to others and thus true association with the heart of all other selves and disassociation only from the illusory husks which prevent the adept from correctly perceiving the self and other self as one. Question 80.12 Questioner, then you say that this effect of disassociation on a service to others adept is a stumbling block or slowing process in reaching that goal to which he aspires? Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. This is incorrect. This disassociation from the miasma of illusion and misrepresentation of each and every distortion is a quite necessary portion of an adept's path. It may be seen by others to be unfortunate. Question 80.13 Questioner, then is this, from the point of view of the fifteenth archetype, somewhat of an excursion into the matrix of the spirit in this process? Does that make any sense? Answer, I am Ra. The excursion of which you speak in the process of disassociation is most usually linked with that archetype you call hope which we would prefer to call faith. This archetype is the catalyst of the spirit and, because of the illuminations of the potentiator of the spirit, will begin to cause these changes in the adept's viewpoint. Question 80.14 Questioner, I didn't intend to get too far ahead of my questioning process here. The positively or negatively polarized adept, then, is building a potential to draw directly on the spirit for power. Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. It would be more proper to say that the adept is calling directly through the spirit to the universe for its power, for the spirit is a shuttle. Question 80.15. Questioner, the only obvious significant difference, I believe, between the positive and negative adepts in using this shuttle is the way they polarize. Is there a relationship between the archetypes of the spirit and whether the polarization is either positive or negative? Is, for instance, the positive calling through the sixteenth archetype and the negative calling through the fifteenth archetype? I am very confused about this and I imagine that that question is either poor or meaningless. Can you answer that? Answer, I am Ra. It is a challenge to answer such a query, for there is some confusion in its construction. However, we shall attempt to speak upon the subject. The adept, whether positive or negative, has the same matrix. The potentiator is also identical. Due to the catalyst of each adept the adept may begin to pick and choose that into which it shall look further. The experience of the spirit, that which you have called the moon, is then, by far, the more manifest of influences upon the polarity of the adept. Even the most unhappy of experiences, shall we say, which seem to occur in the catalyst of the adept, seen from the viewpoint of the spirit may, with the discrimination possible in shadow, be worked with until light equaling the light of brightest noon descends upon the adept and positive or service to others illumination has occurred. 
the service to self adept will satisfy itself with the shadows and, grasping the light of day, will toss back the head in grim laughter, preferring the darkness. Question 80.16 Questioner, I guess the nineteenth archetype of the spirit would be the significator of the spirit. Is that correct? Answer, I am Ra. This is correct. Question 80.17 Questioner, how would you describe the significator of the spirit? Answer, I am Ra. In answer to the previous query we set about doing just this. The significator of the spirit is that living entity which either radiates or absorbs the love and the light of the one infinite creator, radiates it to others or absorbs it for the self. Question 80.18 Questioner, then would this process of radiation or absorption, since we have what I would call a flux or flux rate, be the measure of the adept? Answer, I am Ra. This may be seen to be a reasonably adequate statement. Question 80.19. Questioner, then for the twentieth archetype I am guessing that this is the transformation of the spirit, possibly analogous to the sixth density merging of the paths. Is this in any way correct? Answer, I am Ra. No. Question 80.20. Questioner, sorry about that. Can you tell me what the twentieth archetype would be? Answer, I am Ra. That which you call the sarcophagus in your system may be seen to be the material world, if you will. This material world is transformed by the spirit into that which is infinite and eternal. The infinity of the spirit is an even greater realization than the infinity of consciousness, for consciousness which has been disciplined by will and faith is that consciousness which may contact intelligent infinity directly. There are many things which fall away in the many, many steps of that upward. We, of Ra, still walk these steps and praise the one infinite creator at each transformation. Question 80.21 Questioner, then I would guess that the twenty-first archetype would represent contact with intelligent infinity. Is that correct? Answer, I am Ra. This is correct, although one may also see the reflection of this contact as well as the contact with intelligent energy which is the universe or, as you have called it somewhat provincially, the world. Question 80.22 Questioner, then by this contact also with intelligent energy can you give me an example of what this would be for both the contact with intelligent infinity and the contact with intelligent energy? Could you give me an example of what type of experience this would result in, if that is at all possible? Answer, I am Ra. This shall be the last query of this working at full length. We have discussed the possibilities of contact with intelligent energy. For this energy is the energy of the Logos, and thus it is the energy which heals, builds, removes, destroys, and transforms all other selves as well as the self. The contact with intelligent infinity is most likely to produce an unspeakable joy in the entity experiencing such contact. If you wish to query in more detail upon this subject, we invite you to do so in another working. Is there a brief query before we close this working? Question 80.23. Questioner, is there anything that we can do to improve the contact or to make the instrument more comfortable? Answer, I am Ra. The alignments are most conscientious. We are appreciative. The entity which serves as instrument is somewhat distorted towards the condition you call stiffness of the dorsal regions. Manipulation would be helpful. I am Ra. I leave you my friends, glorying in the light and the love of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai.